I want y'all to know I got a big smile because I'm from Harris in the house. What's going on in our world and in our lives today? The world doesn't want to show or see this because there are a lot of people that won't claim where they actually come from or, or what their bloodline is. My name is Kelly Irvin and I am a doula. I am a fifth generation doula and I live in the southwest corner of Caldwell County and I have lived here my entire life. It's called Doula Town. Looking over at the mountain behind those trees there's home. This community was founded by my great-great-grandmother and grandfather. My great-great-grandmother's name was Harriet Dula, and my great-great-grandfather was Alfred Dula, and uh, Harriet was actually a slave. She had eight children by Alfred, who was her owner, and upon his death, he had willed this property to Harriet and her heirs. I heard Growing up uh, in this area, 95% of us were related. We were di directly descended from Harriet and Alfred. So it's, it's our home, it was our inheritance, and it's been passed down to us. Alfred was born in 1812. He married a young woman named Elizabeth Evelyn Corpening. She died at a very young age, leaving Alfred with six young children. And he purchased a slave named Harriet Harshaw around 1846. She came there to be the housekeeper she brought with her two young children. From looking at her picture, you, you, you can see her Native American features with the cheekbones. And, um, and she looks from her picture that we have of her as an older woman, as though she would have been a, a really beautiful young woman. Six years after he purchased Harriet, their first child was born. His name was Samuel. And then every couple of years after that, you had another one come along. All together, they had eight children. The last was born, Grant was born around 1866. So he was born after emancipation. Ed, who was my great grandfather, was born about 1864. So technically, you know, he was after emancipation too. I don't know how many years ago it started, over 40. And it would start with different, uh, I think it started with my great uncle's family and then it just kind of branched out from there. And they finally started calling it the Harriet Dula reunion because it's just, it was everybody. Of course, a meal, picnics, church, the whole deal. And uh, they kind of just roaming and visiting, especially for the relatives that don't live here. They get to come in and uh, walk around and visit people and catch up on things. Because all Harriet's children 
So here we go. Edward, Emma, Solomon, Frank, Alexander, Cameron, Samuel, and of course, Ross. Alfred was well-to-do, he was uh, respected in the community, had a good farm, and he could very easily have married again. Alfred clearly chose, whatever his reasons were, not to marry again. He chose to continue a relationship with a slave for nearly 40 years. It's not just something that, oh, okay, well, I've been with this man all this time, but he actually did help her. And she actually did help him. Because I do believe some of the slave masters love their slave women. You know, I really do. It, it's really, I think it's virtually impossible to say what kind of relationship they had. Um, there was a time that Harriet, and this was probably around the 1860s, just from kind of putting things together, seems to be about the right time. When Harriet was involved in a relationship with a black man, um, she ended up pregnant by this man, and she actually gave birth to a child. This child's name was Reether, and uh, the child died. Not sure what the you know situation was that led to the child's death, but this child was actually the first child, the first person buried in the Doolittown Cemetery. Part of the story with uh, Harriet's relationship with the black man was that Alfred was not pleased. <laughs> and he came to her home at one point, which was just about a mile from his house. He built her a house about a mile away from where his house sat. And he knew that the man was there, and he supposedly came and ran him off with a shotgun. And the man never returned. So it appears that at least at one point, Harriet was interested in maybe pursuing a relationship and, and, and uh, something that was of her choice. But uh, didn't work out, because at that point, she was still a slave. She was still someone else's property. And uh, she was obliged to do what he told her to do. Prior to his death, he had started giving land to his black sons and to Harriet. He gave her property as a life estate. And the final bequest, if you will, from uh, Alfred to his black sons came in his will, his testamentary will. Basically, Alfred had treated everybody fairly when he died. And the black children could not inherit the property directly because he wasn't married and because of the time and all this type thing. So he set it up where my, my line, Julius Dula, who uh, was the executor of the estate, and Alfred actually made a provision in his will where if anybody contested the will, then they lost their 100 acres. So it was a caveat there. Well, Julius was the executor. One person did protest the will, and that guy lost his 100 acres. There have been estimates made that uh, the land that Alfred gave to his black sons totaled around 2,000 acres. My story begins with Caroline, his older, Alfred's older black daughter. And um, as we were growing up, my mama used to always remind me on my daddy's side that we had, um, that Albert had gave us a part of some land out in Doula Town. So, and I don't know where um, Caroline's portion of the land started that she received from her father, Alfred, but this is the road that we always came down and we were told that we had property on this land. Each section had, uh, was named after a, a particular child of Alfred Square, and they sectioned off Doolittown into their name, to that particular name. Like this is Walltown, 
we Grant Town's up there, and we went through Ed Town earlier. The unusual piece is certainly, I think, that Alfred made provisions for his black children. Even when they were still on the backside of the Emancipation Proclamation and still technically slaves, Alfred had started to ed educate his children. He educated Harriet. He taught them to read. You just didn't talk about the fact that you were of mixed ancestry. On the white side, you did not acknowledge the fact that somebody in your family had had a relationship with a slave. You have a lot more, actually, blacks that are carrying the surname Dula and came from that bloodline than you do whites who are still carrying that name. One of the primary questions I had was, uh, you know, how could the brothers Aurelius and Julius go to war and fight for the Confederacy, knowing that they had brothers and sisters who were in slavery? And it just, it made me go into a whole different place of critical thinking and, you know, thinking about the social context of that time, uh, not by any means to excuse it or to even explain it, but just to think about it. The conversations are not easy. The conversations about race are not easy. The conversations about slavery are not easy. Um, I mean, the fact of it is, my to great grandfather owned slaves, as did his father before him and his father before him. And uh, that's, that's fact. Um, the fact that Alfred reacted differently than his neighbors uh, following the Civil War is, uh, I guess, the grounds for the reason that we can do this. And my grandmother was a doula who was raised in Lenore, and she did not ever, ever talk about it. She lived to be 100 years old. She was in her 99 and a half. <clears throat> but she never, ever talked about black people. So I go to my dad and said, Dad, I, we have all these black relatives. We don't want to talk about it. I said, why not? He said, well, because it's part of the family we just don't talk about. I said, okay. I go to my mother. Mother, do you know we have black relatives? No, we don't have any black relatives. Yes, mother, I do. <laughs> You're not a doula, but I have black relatives. And I said, matter of fact, I'm a doula twice over because my grandmother and grandfather were first cousins. In the 70s, you know, as I was a, a teenager, uh, and when people would write historical articles, at that time, many of them were still trying to, to deny that these were Alfred's children. You know, they were still trying to say, well, they took on the doula name because they were his slaves. Mm -hmm. There were people, even as recently as that, who were trying to deny that he was their biological father, in spite of the public records, you know, that where he acknowledged them, in spite of the fact that he left the will to them. Oh, your great grandparents too, right? No. My grandparents. Your grandparents, right? Okay, I forgot mm -hmm. they are. Oh Lord. Your grandfather's well, over here. How well do I remember Grandma Miller? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, here's the family. Here's your great, great, great grandfather, right? No, great, great, great grandfather over here. No, it's a shadow. I know. I think Arthur was a doctor. 
as my father had started uh, telling the story, there were actually people of his generation, our black relatives, who didn't want the story told. There were eight children that were born to Harriet and Alfred, and I found death certificates for six of them. Three of them listed Squire Dula or Alfred Dula as their father, but there were others who didn't. And of those who didn't, there was a black doctor in the county at the time named Dr. Arthur Garfield Dula, who was actually Alfred and Harriet's grandson. And uh, of course, he attended all of the black folks and the gypsies and people like that in the area. And when his aunts and uncles died, clearly he knew the story. He knew who their father was. But even though he was the physician of record, that record, that information wasn't supplied. I'm sure there was still a lot of emotional baggage tied to it. Um, there was clearly some resentment. And there was, um, I don't know that I can e even explain what all it was, but there was some hurt there. And how long you been here? Uh, since I was 11. Every year now for the past, I don't know, 15, 20 years, the doulas from Doula Town, which we refer to as the black doulas, have had a family reunion. And about eight years ago, I decided that the white doulas ought to get involved also. And that's when we had the first participation in the black doula reunion where five white doulas attended. I was curious where our descendants came from. So I called my Uncle Tom and I said, Tom, I said, where, where are we from? He said, you need to call Aunt Carla. I go, who is Aunt Carla? I never heard of Aunt Carla. And Aunt Carla lived in California. So I went and called her and she said, oh, by the way, this September there's a reunion in Lenore, North Carolina. I said, great. Then I said, that's fine. So she said, why don't you come? I said, okay. So we walked in, I was kind of surprised to see 150 people that are black that I'm related to. Of those people, I got to looking at them, and one lady looked just like my grandmother. And one guy from Ohio, a doula guy from Ohio, looked just like my cousin Mike, which I had no clue how I was related. So it was an interesting moment. And I'm Nanny, I'm Karen. What's interesting about it is that we, uh, you grew up knowing all these people all your lives, but you never knew they were your relatives until, you know, you get into the, the real family history. black. We consider ourselves blacks. And, uh, you know, but yet and still, even with that, it's just been understood that, you know, there are other things, you have other bloodlines within you. I mean, that's just, it, it's not to say that one's better than the other or anything. It's just, and I don't think by being taught that, that's what our ancestors were trying to say. It's just, this is here. This is who you are. Well, I am Liddell. Well, I know I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Harriet and Alfred Dula. If Harriet and Alfred Dula had never consummated, I wouldn't even be here talking. And, you know, so I feel fine. That's how I got here. And I'm okay with it. Fight all that. Oh, really? It's as positive as a story about slavery could be. 
a man, you know, who acknowledged them openly during his lifetime in spite of the fact that society was dead set against it. Uh, by the time emancipation came along and uh, they were all free to go about their own ways, I, I would imagine that Harriet kind of weighed things out. And she may have considered, well, I have my family. Uh, we have homes. We have land. We are well off by the standard of our other fellow black people. And uh, maybe this is just what we need to do. Maybe this is just the life that we need to uphold. It was what they knew and what they had, and it was the only tangible thing that they could hold on to. to come together. They bring family members together. It allows us to see how far we have came. They offer the opportunities for family members to connect with one another. They provide each person the opportunity to share memories and values that will last not just for a while, but for a lifetime. It teaches us a little bit about our heritage and where we came from. And it provides a means for the younger family members to learn about their heritage. Even meeting new cousins that I've never even met before, it's really interesting. And I even met a few people that, that I knew in real life, but I didn't, I didn't know that were family, but are actually family, so that's pretty cool. You know, you say you're a doula, people say, oh, you're from doula town. It's like there's automatically a connection to something. My great-grandfather is Edward Doula, so that's how we come into the doula family. Gives everybody a sense of some common background to most people who are African-American. Our records go back to property, and, and, and that's where it stops. You know, you may be able to trace somebody back to a port of entry, but that's as far back as you can go, so you don't have a sense of country, you don't have a sense of any kind of geographic identity other than what we've gained here in America. So I think that's why Harriet really resonates with people so, because it gives you something of a sense of origin. You know, my kids and this generation have grown up in a different world, so sometimes for them it's kind of hard to see, well, what's the big deal? You know, your, your, your uncle was white, so what? By no means have we healed completely anything, but uh, the advances that we've been able to make between the black side of the family and the white side of the family are amazing. I, I love it. We've got people walking around, hey cuz, how are you? I've thought about the difference that having that land made to the family and I, I think it made a huge difference. I think it's a difference that we see even to this day. My father had told us when we were growing up that we had a town in North Carolina called Dua Town, and we kind of said, sure, Dad, sure. But then as I got older, I started to hear him and his brothers talk about Dua Town more and more. And then when I got 19, one of my cousins came up from Lenore to stay with us. I've had relatives that have they went off to college, they didn't come back, they married, there are other parts of other communities, some in other states. So, and that's changed the makeup of the community and the dynamics, but still there's a strong sense of heritage out here and you know a real doula when you meet one. 
there's still very much a, a psychological community of Doula Town, though, and I see that clearly with a Facebook page uh, that I started called Doula Town. And there are people from all over the world, literally, who have joined the page and, and started looking through the old pictures and said, oh my gosh, that's my great-great-grandmother or that's my uncle or, you know, they have just begun to, it touches something spiritual, I think, in people. And uh, I think the community, while the physical community is changing some, I think the spiritual and psychological community is is expanding because people are tapping into part of their history and and other people that that have that common history you know there's doulas all over the world now and you know so even if your name's not doula and you have some doula blood in you you you're still a doula people are claiming groupship from all over the place and i just love how um i've got some of my dearest friends right now are cousins that I picked up through this story. And they're people I didn't grow up with. You know, they weren't like the cousins that I ran up and down the road catching lightning bugs with. You know, we didn't have that uh, kind of a relationship, but we've come together around this history and really, really gotten close. The Harry Dula family is a vine. And in order for this bond to continue, we have to stay connected. Amen. And in order for the Harry Dula family to continue, we have to be reconnected. You are the branches. You're here for a reason. You all are what's keeping this community going. What welcomes me home is the sign that my cousins put down at the end of the road there, Welcome to Doula Town. That's just an example of the sense of pride that the Doula family has in their heritage. Oh!